Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me in for episode 6 of Chronicles in Collecting, where we're going to be checking out the Gundam GP02A, as well as discuss uh, Gundam 83 Stardust Memory, what it's about, kind of a little bit of a, a non-spoiler plot summary, and why you should include it in your watch-through of Mobile Suit Gundam. So in our last Gundam um, primer, we went over Mobile Suit Gundam, which covered kind of the original one-year war that went from Universal Century 0079 to 0080. Um, and just as a brief recap, it was fought between the Earth Federation forces um, and the Zabi family who were fighting kind of under the um, flag of the Zeon nation, which was the colony of side three, one of the space colonies surrounding Earth. So the next main entry in the Mobile Suit Gundam series after that is Zeta Gundam. However, there are a lot of sort of side stories that chronologically take place bef uh, in between Mobile Suit Gundam and Zeta Gundam. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to do primers on all of them, you know, maybe as some figures come in, we'll, we'll discuss it. Um, I mean, the Gundam side stories kind of fall into like one of two categories and, and many of them are very good and this isn't meant to, um, you know, sort of demean them as media, just their importance to the overall sort of Gundam lore basically two categories. One is there's some sort of like super secret special Gundam or other mobile suit that was like deployed during the one year war in like some crazy backwater country and never saw into battle. And then sort of the second one is there's some sort of like ragtag group of either Xeon warriors um, or Earth Federation troops that are, you know, either in in some minor base somewhere that like isn't really a focus of the Mobile Suit Gundam show, or they they participated in some of the battles that happened in the show, but like they kind of happened like in the background, um, or you know they were off screen or something like that. So like they were involved, but like you didn't see them. So Gundam Stardust Memory is kind of a little bit of both of those. Um, it takes place in uh, 0083, so it's actually obviously you know uh, three or four years later of. of beginning or end of one-year war, depending on how you want to count it. And it starts off with um, some Earth Federation troops at some sort of like secret research base, and they are researching whatever it is that they're researching. I don't want to give that away. But importantly, they have a bunch of, you know, prototype Gundams there that, you know, no one has ever seen before and, and this, that, and the other thing. Um, and then there's sort of like the last remnants, or, I mean, one of the remnant groups of Xeon Warriors, um, led by this kind of like ace pilot um, named Annabelle Gato. I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. You know, it's, it's hard with the, with the Japanese. Um, and basically, they're trying to steal this like prototype weaponry as part of their Operation Stardust, which is going to, um, you know, in their minds, give them another chance to just defeat the, the Earth Federation. So I think that. Uh, Gundam 83 sort of just generally speaking introduces this sort of interesting concept which is sort of the you know the Xeon remnants and um, you know where they are and how they feel and that's something we're going to see continued on over the you know next 10 or 15 years of universe you know in universe universal century timeline of just you know you kind of have all these Xeon people and some of them are on earth some of them are in space they're kind of all over and just sort of kind of what they're doing and some of them who don't accept that the war is over um, and keep tr keep fighting and keep trying to find sort of new leadership, um, you know, to bring them into that. Kind of a little bit where you, you know, you hear like some story about World War II where there was like some island and like no one found out that the war was over so they just kept fighting. I mean, these people did find out with the, that the war is over but they don't maybe necessarily believe it or, you know, they don't agree or they think that, um, you know, the government, the uh, New Zealand government, you know, is just a puppet government or something like that. So to kind of get back to the story of, of 83, so they basically, um, you know, steal this weapon and uh, the, the show is, you know, just sort of those exploits and the execution of Operation Stardust Memory, which, I mean, I guess this might technically be a spoiler but ends with the Zeons trying to drop a colony on Earth, which is basically the only arrow in Zeon's quiver. No matter what happens, they're just going to try to drop another colony on Earth. That's, that's pretty much all they do. Um, as for Gundam 83, it's a 13-episode series. It came out in 1991. 
It was later compiled into like a two hour movie. I've seen the uh, episode version, I've not seen the movie version. You know, I think that the show was probably short enough that, you know, you're, you're only, you're, you know, you're, you're maybe shave a few hours off, but you're not really saving all that much time um, by watching the compilation movie. So I'd probably recommend the, the actual show. Um, and the kind of the most important reason why I wanted to discuss it is sort of how it leads into Zeta Gundam and how it sort of fits into the Xeon lore. So again, um, as far as when the actual media came out, Gundam 83 Stardust Memory came out after Zeta Gundam, but in universe it takes place before. And the important thing is that kind of throughout, at the beginning of Zeta Gundam, the Earth Federation had like mostly given up on fighting the rest of the Xeon remnants. And they're like, okay, there's like a few people out there. Um, you know, they had a few hit squads to deal with them, but for the most part, it like wasn't really like a priority of theirs and they weren't super focused on mobile suit development. Um, you know, they were kind of shifted more into peacetime. Um, however, there was growing in power people within the Earth Federation forces who were sort of growing in influence and growing in power. And they were kind of more, I guess, of like the warmongers and they wanted to see the war continue. Throughout the course of Gundam 83, they basically manipulate events from the Earth Federation side to lead to a situation where they're kind of able to take control. And this um, group within the Earth Federation, which is called the, the Tetons, but actually written Titans, um, they're this sort of like Earth uh, superiority group. They think that the Earth noids are better than the space noids, um, and they're kind of overly violent. And they are th the main um, enemies in Zeta Gundam. So what's cool about eighty three is that it kind of tells you this cool story, but it sort of ends up with building up who's going to become the villain in Zeta Gundam. And that's why I think it's important to watch. Um, when you're going through when you're going through Gundam because again you know you you would skip from original Mobile Suit Gundam to Zeta Gundam and you don't really it's just sort of like a oh, blam okay these guys are here no real context as to what happened this this show kind of fills in some of the contact con context um, of why the characters are acting in a certain way and and sort of what the greater political environment uh, is uh, in Universal Century at this time certainly there are lots of other um, mangas and anime and video games and other side stories that also kind of helped to do that. But I thought that this was a combination of that plus dealing with the plot that I think is is worth dealing with. Um, there's a number of new mobile suits that debut in the show, as you could probably guess. I picked this one as representative of it because I think it's the most visually distinct and visually striking of the Gundams in that show. There are some cool mobile armors, but those haven't been released in uh, Robot Spirits yet. But basically, this is part of, you know, this Gundam research pro pro project. There's the GP-01, there's the GP-02, and the GP-03. Um, the main villain gets the GP-02. The main hero takes the GP-01. Eventually, they get to space, um, and the GP-03 also makes its debut. But let's get into this Robot Spirits figure. So this figure came out in August 2009. It retailed for about 7,400 yen. Um, you know, that was obviously quite a while ago. So I had to pick it up on the secondary market. It cost me about $105. Unfortunately, after I bought it, it was announced that they would be doing a reprint of it. So there's a reprint of it coming out later this year. Most of the pre-orders are sold out. Um, you know, it could be some more in as you get closer to release. So, But it did kind of lower the price of the figure down in the secondary market because there was all these new ones coming in. All right, let's take a look. here so I think the first thing that is just so striking about this figure is these these wings and the shield um, you know I think that certainly in this time in Universal Century and even in Universal Century in general you don't see a lot of stuff like that you know like on a Gundam obviously later on there's like Death Sith and um, you know Master Gundam and there's other Gundams that do have that kind of you know cloaking shield around them but I think this is really one of the first um, instances of that that you see and it just had this like giant shield um, and this like giant bazooka I think another thing that might also reach out is that uh, might also point out um, is that this figure is very very gray and that's actually not um, screen accurate it should be white no one's quite sure why this figure came out so gray uh, if you actually look at the box 
the figure is maybe not quite white, but certainly not as gray as the final one came out. It's unclear to me um, if the new printing is going to be whiter or not. The pictures of it that they showed did not look um, all that different, so I'm kind of expecting it to basically be the same thing. Um, but that is something to also kind of keep in mind. So this is this is a pretty nice figure, especially for something you know from Universal Century that you know earlier on tend to have more maybe basic designs. Um, a lot of posability. You could see it's got these like cool spikes on his foot. Just a lot of nice detailing, um, you know, on the figure. And you know, this isn't like one of the metal robots or really expensive um, robot spirits figures. So you know, compare it to like the Zaku Two or the RX seventy eight that we looked at, and and something that you know retailed for about the same amount. But this is a lot more um, detailed, and it comes with a lot more accessories. So I think it's actually a pretty nice pretty nice value as well. Let's try to stand him up there. Um, so we got the bazooka. It's actually a two-piece two bazooka. Um, and this bazooka plays pretty heavily uh, into the plot as to what it fires, so I will, I will not reveal that. Um, it's got this, like, giant shield. It's got an extra pair of uh, Gundam horns. I don't know if you could actually... Yeah, so you got a little bit of that that goes over here. You got this really cool shield that's humongous. Actually, you could fit the bazooka in the shield, which is accurate to the show, um, which is really nice. You got this um, effect part that's sort of like a, yeah, kind of like a blast of some sort. I don't, I'm not 100% sure what the purpose of this one is. I don't know if it says it on the back here. It might be for like, you know, fire, firing the bazooka or something like that. We do have some instructions. And then there's actually some really cool, actually some really nice other effect parts. So you got these two guys right here, which are kind of, um, there's kind of supposed to, you know, you could put them, you know, at, on the thrusters or on his boots to kind of show that he's, you know, moving forward to show the kind of uh, ignition of that. And then it's got a bunch of beam sabers. And I think this beam saber is, is probably the coolest one because it's sort of got this curved beam. And then you have a whole bunch of different hands for holding, uh, you know, all the different, um, you know, different weapons, you know, different weapons. And then you also have this thing right here, which is, I think they call it like a, a hand storage dock or something. I don't know exactly what they call it, but basically it just lets you store all the different hands. So I'm gonna pause this for a second and um, kind of figure out how to pose this guy, get him into a cool pose. I might put up a separate video of me getting into that and I will join you back when I have him posed um, and I'll give you my final thoughts on the figure. And we are back. So I got this guy in a pose that um, I kind of like, sort of flying in about, about to fire. But um, I definitely found out a lot of really cool things about this figure and it's really amazing how much stuff they kind of crammed into this guy. Um, you know, for, like I said, 7,400 yen and, and even, you know, something that you could probably get for around 100 bucks. So first of all, which is cool, is this thing um, sort of can come in and come out and it's actually attached to this other little booster over here. And also, if you look from behind, you could see that this booster also adjusts so you could either have the wings collapsed or you could have them out. Um, obviously, you have this this cool effects part right here that you could put, you know, you could put it here, you could put it here, you could put it on the feet, wherever you think it might look cool. And um, you could, right now, I don't think you could actually buy them separately, but there is an effects part set coming out later this year where you can get more of these things. I don't know what they're called, but you know, you could put them all over. Um, what's also really cool about that anim the, the, the anime series line, and anime stands for, it says it on here, Action, new imagination, memory, emotion. I'm clearly a backronym. Um, but so the anime sub anime spirits subline of the robot spirits line have all these sort of like interchangeable parts. So you could basically take parts from other figures, um, and for the most part, they're they all use sort of the same little nibs and nubs. So you can kind of plug them in. There's also an effect coming out. Uh, in that effect part set that's coming out later this year is like a rocket, so you could kind of show him firing the missile. I had a different missile from a different effects part set that I tried, but unfortunately it didn't work. So anyway, so you have, you have the cool boosters. 
Um, you have the rocket launcher. The rocket launcher is actually two pieces, and the back piece connects over here. Um, so it kind of kind of got this little part of it that's stored, and then you keep half of it in here, you keep half of it on its back, and then you, you um, recombine it, which is nice. I mean, the, the legs have a ton of articulation. I'm trying to get a good angle so you could see it. But, you know, the, the toes move back and forth, left and right. Um, I don't understand why you would need to have feet that are this mobile. But it's, you know, it's helpful if, if you want to do, you know, a bunch of different dynamic poses. Um, the effects are really cool. This is another effect. I, I unfortunately didn't get a chance to use it, but it's got this, like, uh, this, like, Kylo Ren lightsaber thing over here where it's, you know, um, right around the, uh, the, um, you know, the, the non-laser part of his his sword. But like I said, because of the robot spirits lines, um, you know, I'll probably just put this on the side and next time I have a figure posing where I'm, you know, trying to go like this or whatever, uh, you know, I could, I could have this whole effect. What's also, I thought, a really nice touch is that um, these beam sabers actually go into his holster. I'm trying to make sure that you can try to angle it there so you can see it. Um, Yeah, so he actually has two different beam sabers, and they both they both holster on, which is a you know again a really nice touch, especially on a figure that's not like in the super premium line. You know, obviously we saw some like Big O and Gal Gygar that are like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Um, you know, and th that's where you would expect to see all these little touches and um, you know little accessories and stuff like that. But you could tell there was a lot of love put put into this. There's a uh, one, two, three, four different. Um, beam saber effects plus this other thing that I was talking about. I just want to make sure there's nothing else here. The If I did have one complaint, uh, although the feet are very articulated, I felt like the body, just because I think of everything that it's got going on, you can't really move it that much. I was kind of thinking about maybe doing a pose where, you know, his legs were like this, but he was sort of turning to, to fire his rocket launcher, but he can't. Um, it's sort of tilted to the side, so I just moved his head a little bit to the right. So you're, like I said, from the waist up, you're sort of limited. But I think part of that has to do with just all this, you know, equipment that um, that he has on him. But that being said, I still think that there's a lot of possibilities for for sweet poses. Um, you know, again, I, I really liked this beam saber effect, but I thought that this shield was just too iconic and too unique uh, to not pose him with it. I'm sure that I'll find another Gundam that's going to be using kind of a, a green saber that I can kind of show in in process. Anyway, so that is the Robot Spirits GPO-2A. I keep forgetting the name of it for some reason, and I gotta keep looking. Uh, from Gundam 83 Stardust Memory, I would definitely recommend giving um, Stardust Memory a watch, especially if you know, you're know you kind of trying to do a, a Gundam from the beginning. You could check out the Mobile Suit Gundam uh, primer that I did last time, uh, maybe watch the compilation movies, and then head into 83 Stardust Memory um, you know, on your way to Shars Counterattack or Unicorn or or Hathaway or, or whatever your your desired endpoint is. Definitely recommend this figure. It's it's just such a unique looking Gundam. It's got so many effect parts. It's got so many little details. Um, and especially now that it's being reprinted, which is going to lower the price probably even more. And I bet it'll be even lower even lower when the actual second print comes out. Not sure about if the new one's going to be kind of white or gray. I think it's probably just going to be the same color because they're calling it the same figure, not a new version of it. For watching, and please make sure to check out next week's episode where we're going to be taking a look at the metal build Ava 01 unit um, and maybe some sort of primer in Evangelion. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, but we'll uh, give a little bit about what the story is about. Thanks so much, and uh, keep collecting.